Welcome riding buddies. This week for my video, we've got a really, really special one for you. What I've done, I've G'd up with an old mate of mine, Harry Mason, who has got a little bit of a disease. He's uh, got a bit of a disease that some of the vintage guys do have, but Harry has just done an amazing job. He's got a lot of bikes here. So what we're gonna do for this video, we're gonna have a look at what he's got in his shed here. And then I'm gonna do also do some more videos of a couple of Harry's special bikes that, um, that Ding has wanted to ride on. Um, Ding's meant to be around here somewhere. He'll probably turn up here a little bit later, so we'll keep an ear out for Ding as well. But also Harry, this is Harry Mason. Um, so how long have you had this disease for? Oh, I started back when I used to live in America and I started collecting a few old bikes put about six in a container and brought them home with me. And then they grew, just kept on growing till I've, you know, I've got about 150 or 60 of them. <laughs> oh, you've got a bad, mate, you've got a bad. <laughs> so what we'll do, we'll walk into Harry's shed and see what it's like, eh? Okay, so we're in Harry's shed here. Down here, we've got the, the uh, work area. Um, so what have we got? We got the 80, what's that? 84, 84 CR 500. Yeah, so that's the only air-cooled CR 500 that they made. Um, that is a beautiful bike down there. Over the back here, actually one of the little special bikes that I remember, Harry. What have we got down the back there? A little Monty. Yeah, a little Monty. I remember that little Montessa from way back when um, another mate of ours owned it shall we say, and it's probably one of the most unreliable bikes I ever remember, but you've made it reliable. What have you done down there, Harry? Yeah, I cast a YZ125 engine into it, so hopefully that'll make it work better. Husky forks on the front of it. Yeah, so, yeah, the little Montessa engine, as pretty as that bike was, and when I did my video on the best looking motocross bikes, it was my number one pick, wholly and solely because of that bike, but it was probably one of the most unreliable bikes I ever remember as well. But yeah, a couple of, um, HLs there, Harry. You're making some HLs as well? Yeah, you've got a Jeff Morris concept frame there in the um, closest one. A couple of Husky frames in the other ones, but yeah, they're, they're a pro work in progress and uh, one day I hope to get them running. Yeah, HLs, very beautiful looking bike when they're finished. No doubt you'll have something sorted out there. Okay, so as we're still walking through the shed here, what do we got here? We got KX125? Yeah, uh, YZ100. Yeah, there's a rare boy. Why is it 100? Don't come across them much these days. A couple of IT 250s. Got a bit of a fetish for IT's. Yeah, I've good. noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a Husky 430. And there's my most recent motocross bikes. A 2007 uh, CR 450 and a 2006 CR 250F. And they're my current race bikes. <laughs> current? I still remember you racing that a few years ago when we raced against each other in the vets classes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, got about 35 hours on it. That's, and this one's got about four, uh, 85 hours. Come through in here and more of the shed. We've got a, uh, what is it, 56? Yeah, Bel 56 Air. Bel Air. Uh, 71. XY, a GS, Fairmont. So it's not just um, bikes, he's a bit, it's also cars. So you come down the back, oh my God, Harry, what have you done? I've um, lined them up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, so we've got bikes galore down here. Um, you take the lead there, mm. Hazza. Well, that's the YZ. Um, YZ right. collection. We've got a couple of J's there, H's, yeah. all sorts of it. An X. Yeah. An X with those um, really weird front forks on them. The Bumblebee. The Bumblebee, yeah, because yeah. the, the X, back in that era, Bikes with technology was changing so fast, they bought in intramodal model software. That's right. I've said before in a couple of my videos that the technology in the 70s, and they were bringing out, like, um, Mako had the 74.5 yeah. with the long travels. KDM did the same thing, and that's what the, the X is. It's it's um, that in-between six-month model, wasn't it? That's right. It's a half-year bike. Yeah, so... So it's uh, 75 and a half, <laughs> that one is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a different thing. They experimented with those forks. I don't know if those forks ever worked or not. No, Somebody else. Yeah, they were pretty horrible. Yeah, I never ever rode one, so I'm not too sure. 
But down there further, if you look down there, we've got um, YZ2, uh, YZ125T. Um, beautiful bike they were. I remember those back in the day. And then, H. yeah, the H there, water cooled 125H, obviously, the very first water cooled Yamahas, TTRs. Oh, we've got a random Honda shoved in there as well, an old XL250. Ah, it's a 500. Ooh, 500. <laughs> That's an insult to it, wasn't it? Call them a 250. <laughs> okay, so we're into a couple of Suzuki's here. We've got a bit of a sad case there. That's a restoration in project. <laughs> Work in progress. Yep. But then we come along to very, very special bike, a genuine RH250. So we all know what the RHs were. Very, very special bike, hand-built works bike. Um, Joel Rob A's actually autographed this one, so they're an absolutely beautiful bit of gear. Ding was actually hoping to get a ride on the RH, but we don't have any really shocks on it, so that's probably a good thing, because I don't, I'm actually a bit scared to let Ding loose on that thing, because I know what these things are worth, mm. and I know how hard they are to get parts for, so it's probably a good thing you can't ride it, to be honest. Maybe another time. <laughs> but we work our way back up. We've got the first model RM125. So 75 RM125. Wow, the Yamaha stuck in the middle there. We've got ourselves a full floater Suzuki, that beautiful full floater rear suspension. With a late model rear. <laughs> late model rear car. <laughs> and then we step into a couple more Hondas. What do we got? Uh, that's your MR175. Yeah, and I believe it was owned by Vince Strang's girlfriend originally, Joe McCulloch. Dean Gallagher bought it, and then I bought it off him. So it's a local bike. It's always been in the yeah, area. Yes. Brad Lewis's brother, Daryl, found it at the Inveral Dump. <laughs> and he paid 20 bucks for it. <laughs> and now you've got it and, restored um, it. I swapped him some parts for it, and I got it back again. Oh, man. That's amazing. It is amazing. That's the thing with a lot of these vintage bikes. We look at, we look at things like the RH over there, and and some of the beautiful bikes around, but it's the background story that makes them. That's what it's all about. Right. So we go back along here, and we've got some uh, Red Devils, as mm -hmm. we used to call them, going along there, and a little bit later model YZ250s there. We've got a N and an L, obviously with the, that crazy Z spoke system that Yamaha used to use. Yeah, where one spoke was actually two spokes in one. Um, so that was a bit different for the era. If you broke um, one, you had to pull the whole wheel apart. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, I don't know what... I think it was to do with strength. It was the torsional strength to stop mm. the wheel flexing and things like that. But <laughs> we just moved across a little bit in our cramped little area here, Hazza. Um, so Honda's down here. So what do we got? Run us through what we got here, Hazza. Uh, that's an 82125. 87250. Yes, that is an iconic bike, that one. Yeah, they were amazing bike, the 87250. First re rear disc brake, 84250. Um, we keep going down there, you got some more CR250s. And a 78125 beside them. Another little L snore down there. And a couple of L snores. Then we go into the back row, and I can see a bit of a theme back here, Harry. You've got a bit of a fetish for turkeys by the looks of it. Yeah, my turkeys were the first bike I ever actually owned. So when I see one, I just got to have it. <laughs> I bought 12 of them. <laughs> I've just seen one of my actual favourite, favourite vintage open classes, <laughs> which I've never ridden one. And I don't want game to ride one. <laughs> the big CR450R up in the back there, 81 cr four fifty. Um, what's a bit of a story behind that? I love those things. Well, it's a funny thing. Um, a fellow out at Grah Jean Peak had the frame of it. Graham Tonkin, he's a bit yeah, of a yeah. motorbike restorer and collector. He gave it to me. And so I uh, ended up collecting a bunch of parts from America and shipping them over here. And I put it together and made a one whole bike out of it. And the only safe part of the bike is it's got a safety seat on. They are one of my, what I consider one of the prettiest bikes ever made. But also too, they were a bit of a, they were a bit of a pig. Go dog. They were a bit of a pig. Apparently, you can really get them going these days. Then you come along. Now we've got another CR there. But Harry, we've got a one two five XC. Uh, what's an eighty two model? That's right. That's a pretty special bike for you, isn't it? Yeah, I actually bought that one. It was a brand new bike, straight off the floor from Vince Strang Motorcycles back in the day. 
Actually, I think it might have even been called MS Motorcycles. It was MS Motorcycles back yeah, in those yeah. days. But um, I had that bike for 10 years and then I went overseas on a trip and I sold it to get money. Then about 10 years later, I found it in a shed and um, Daryl Lewis actually found it for me. And I approached the guy and after four years of pestering him, he ended up selling the bike back to me. So you got your old uh, 125 back again. That's it. And uh, we used to race that in Pony Expresses and Dennis Horde was one of my co-riders one time and I've had a lot of guys riding that bike and Ross Worgan and Philip Pember, they borrowed it off me one time and raced it and did pretty well out of it. So that bike's a very, very special and you go along and there's just other bikes here lined up. Not more Elsnors. Yeah, there's lefty there. Okay, so we're up in the second level of your shed here, Hazza. Um, man, you've got a collection of Hondas up here as well. There's Hondas galore. What do you got? Old XL down the end there. Yeah. Another couple of uh, CRs. Come along, really nice little CR125. What's that, a 77, 78? 77. 77. Another... <laughs> Another red plate or Elsnor there, green plate or Elsnor right next door to it. Uh, another couple of turkeys, XL100. How cool are those old XL100? Yeah. I think every kid had an XL100 back in those days. And then we go along, then we got a Montessa there. That bike looks familiar to me, Harry, that, that Monty. Why does it look familiar? Uh, because you've rode it in at Cherrydale in the Nationals. At the National, that would have been the 2000 Nationals at Cherrybarrow race. That was the Montessa that tried to kill me that Mick Bakewell owned at the time. You got a few of Mick, Mick's old Montessas here. Yeah, well, he unloaded a lot of his rubbish to me. <laughs> <laughs> Montessas aren't rubbish. Beautiful old bike. That wing wasn't a beautiful bike. It was quite dangerous. It tried to kill me, just like his XL250 tried to kill me. It seems to be a theme going on here. Mm. Any bike you've got that Mick Bakewell's own tried to kill me at some point. They weren't murder machines, they were suicide machines. Suicide machines. <laughs> so you go along a bit further. PEs. Man, you have got a serious PE fetish right up the very far end. You can just see the headlight up there. What's that one? Uh, it's a 76 PE250. It's got an aluminium tank. And I saved it out of the rubbish dip one time. 76, so that's the very first PE 250s two, two they made. That's right. Awesome, absolutely awesome. Okay, now we're in the roof of the shed here. Um, Harry, we got some pretty rare bikes over here, I see. Some of these early Kawasaki's, you just don't ever see them. And so what do you got, first one off here? It's an A5 KX125. So A5, then we go down to a 75 250. Yes. And then 75, 125, and I think it's a 74, 125. KX. Man, you just don't see these old Kawasaki's, these old KX's anywhere. And there's a gap just there for the KX 400 that's coming from you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and there's still more boys coming. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just absolutely insane. And we just swing around here. I looked across here and I see this little KDM 150 sitting here. and I'll see the M22 on the front of it. That's very familiar to me. This bike come from Toowoomba, I, I very much suspect. Mm. Originally from Inverell, but went to Toowoomba for a while. Mm -hmm. OJ Maguire purchased it off my son. Who was our club president up in Toowoomba for a few years up there as well, and he still runs the M22. That's right. And then he wanted to sell it, so he let me know it was for sale, so I thought, hmm, I'll have that back, thank you. Yeah, so this is probably one of the most modern bikes you've got. Yeah. Right here, I think this is about a 2010 model. I think it is, yes. Thereabouts. Okay, so down the back part of the roof, we've got, what do we got, an old DT250, MX250 beside it there. That's right. Yeah, a couple of TTs, a couple of XTs. Really nice old Husky, what's that, a 77 or 75? Uh, the Macola. It's, it's the Nikola replica, is it? Yes, it is. That was a very, very sweet bike. 74, 75, Macola. Yeah. Um, and the cause beside it, you've got the um, the Husky Auto Motocrosser. So the, the auto version of the CR360, what's here, the 77? 76, I think. 76 model. Um, that's a really sweet little bike. I've got a real soft spot for the Husky Autos. Then you come across further and it's, it's Suzuki fetish over here. We've got 
RMs galore, right from, what'd you say we got from the very first 75 through to 84? So every year of Suzuki, so the first of the RMs right through the end of the full floater RMs. And then a really, really nice KX250 there as well. That's an 82 model, yeah, because it's got the uh, that really strange rear mud guard, the Euro style rear guard, which I actually, a lot of people don't like that guard, but I quite like it actually. <laughs> so this is just getting insane and there's more bikes still coming. So we'll duck down and uh, see what we can find. Down here on the, um, on your hoist, shall we say, is probably the best way of thinking of calling it. We've got the AE390, so the Husky Auto Enduro 390 down there as well. So a man that's got two Husky Autos, you cannot be sane. <laughs> that is for sure. So what we've had to do, we're going to break this video into two different videos. So what you've just watched, that's going to be what I'm going to call Harry Mason Shed 1 because we've got to go across his driveway to the second shed. So I'm going to do it as another video. So we'll leave this bit as it is at the moment. There's just too much for one video. But uh, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button as well. And we'll catch you at Harry Mason Shed 2.